This is it guys, the much anticipated Winchester Super Suppressed using a 255 grain hollow point bullet. When I first heard about this load, I wasn't sure exactly what they would use, if it was going to be a full metal jacket or what, but I'm really happy they went with that, uh, that hollow point. You can see that this bullet looks pretty different from some of the others that they've had out there. A lot of these have uh, kind of a cone shape to them. This one has much more of a rounded 9mm sort of FMJ look to it, and then it just has that big hollow point cavity. We've been testing 350 Legend at 100 and 200 yards for accuracy and to see what kind of damage they can make at some of those practical distances on ballistics gel. So today we have some hurdles that we need to clear. I'm really curious to see if this uh, super suppressed is going to do the job. I want to see first off if at practical distances, which I'm going to consider to be about 50 to 100 yards somewhere in there, uh, to see if that hollow point cavity does expand and what kind of damage it can do. But one of the bigger things that I'm looking for is to see if it can cycle the action of the CMMG Resolute AR-15 actions usually do not deal well with subsonics, uh, except in the case of 9x39. I'll roll in a little footage here so you can see, but that's a very special cartridge that shoots a 269 grain bullet, I think, and that one hits with some authority. That's a really oh, yeah. fun round for those of you guys that are interested in a suppressed, heavy hitting round. And I think this one today is going to do the same. Let's get out there and see what we can do. Well, looky there, it did cycle the action. And it seems to be right on, horizontally anyway. There's a lot more drop. It hit very low compared to the others. So I'm gonna have to come up about three milliradians. Oh yeah, right in the middle. Let's go check it out. Well, I'll be darned. Looky there. Looks like it opens up about two and a half inches in, and it actually cuts a pretty good swath. Look at that right there. That's interesting. All right, so we've gone through 16 inches of gel, and this has about as much penetration. Now, this is 50 yards, but this is getting about the same penetration we were getting with the Spear Deep Curl and some of the others. Looking good. And yes, you can see down inside there that this has mushroomed. It just kind of looks like a column now. It looks like a cylinder. No point left on it at all. And here's from the other angle. All right, you can see that it cut a great big couple of leaf shapes in there. I'm curious to see if this tumbled, if I can figure that out. It looks like tumbling, but I'm not exactly sure this... The damage is pretty two-dimensional. Right, let's see, from the top. Yeah, it does look more like tumbling damage, but it looks like it has a combination of the two. This looks like it probably tumbled twice and then headed down and his nose forward right down here. Here's a close-up view of our 50-yard hit. You can see that it expanded actually very quickly. And it's cutting about a three-quarter inch cut through here. This is a three-dimensional cut until we start to get back into this section through here, where it seems to have tumbled at least once and then, you know, I guess a, a full 360 at least somewhere in here because the bullet actually is pointing forward. You can see that we have the, uh, the pedals that have opened up right there. And yeah, we are getting damage from both cutting and tumbling. And this cut 
if we measure it from where it starts to open up really near the beginning until it gets back out here, we're looking at about a 12 inch long cut. That is amazing. That's right up there with some of these others that we're testing at some of these longer distances. Now remember this is 50 yards, not 100. But uh, yeah, for some of these closer shots, this is actually doing really well. And we're coming to rest right here at about 22 inches. The 100 yard subsonic hit cuts about a half inch channel back through here. And it looks like it's not gonna do much until it flares out again as we get back in here uh, toward the end of the first block. So we've made it through 16 inches of gel. And actually this is where most of the damage is happening right back through here at about the 14 inch mark. This is getting up around one inch of width. And then we're kind of settling down again and coming out the side of the block. This is one that I was not able to recover from the bag. The total distance where it left, this is 24 inches. As you might imagine, it was difficult to get a 200 yard hit with these subsonics. Uh, these had a total drop of seven and a half mils versus the normal 100 yard zero for some of the other rounds that we have. Thankfully, the scope that I was using, that US Optics TS6X, has an FFP reticle that has up to 10 mil radians of drop and windage and all that. So if you want to make those difficult shots, that's one of those AR scopes that'll be able to get the job done. All right, so here is the total track. We enter here pretty softly. Everything is just kind of small and uh, kind of staying within that the, the diameter of the bullet. And then suddenly this flares out into a gigantic tumble. That's one of the, uh, the primary cutting tools that I think that this bullet has. It does expand at some of those closer distances, as we saw, but uh, this does have a tendency to tumble. If you were wondering about the twist rate on 350 Legend, I think this is why they went with 1 in 16. Even a big bullet like this is totally stable through the air, but then you don't want these things to necessarily be that stable once they hit. If you can get that tumbling in addition to the cutting from the expansion, then go for it. Uh, so yeah, what you're looking at right here is actually a cut that it is about uh, nine inches long from its beginning right back here until we get to it uh, kind of settling down here. And it looks like obviously this did tumble twice. This is a two dimensional cut and this has about two inches of width. So this is quite a good performer at all the distances we try. This is actually a really cool load. Here's our 50 yard hit. You can see that those pedals flared very nicely. Some of these are pointing back forward. Uh, these would have been a little bit more pointed backward and this would have been wider overall at some point in the cut, but remember that this did tumble as well as uh, it's forward cutting. So yeah, some of these pedals got bent back uh, toward the forward end. We're gonna see what diameter we ended up with. All right, so we're looking at a bit over a half inch, 0.504, somewhere in there. So yeah, it's a good broad hit, and you can see that it did quite a bit of damage to the gel. Let's see what kind of weight we've retained here. 257.2, so yeah, it looks like this one just picked up a little bit of gel in there somewhere. It actually weighs a little bit more than it originally did. And uh, this one right here, of course, yeah, same thing, it just picked up a little bit of gel so it weighs a little bit more. Let's talk about some of the velocities. Uh, on this one, there was quite a bit of variation and I should point out, first off, take a look at the, uh, the target that we have here. This one is by far the biggest group that we have shot with anything. So this is at 100 yards. And this is probably not really designed to be your 100 yard cartridge. This is supposed to be a little bit closer to that. But yeah, this is 4.6 inches all the way across. And you can see that the horizontal stringing is great. It's just the vertical. And part of it might be explained by these velocities I'm going to show you here. All right, so we're looking at uh, 1,040 feet per second all the way down to, uh, oh no, here we go. 1107 feet per second is our highest. 969 is our lowest, so this one's actually uh, slightly supersonic right here, and then this one is pretty well subsonic. So we're looking at a, a total standard deviation of 49 feet per second, which is uh, just huge, and uh, we're looking at a, a maximum spread, extreme spread of 138 feet per second, so mean of 1034. 
so yeah, this one is not extremely tight. This is one of the difficulties of loading up a subsonic overall that I found. Uh, it's kind of tough to get them all very neatly in, you know, extreme accuracy uh, with these loads but uh, overall this one is just a really fun load and I do recommend it especially you bolt gun guys if you want to slap a suppressor on there uh, this one should be extremely quiet and as you can see it does still hit really hard this could be a good close range round just for some fun at the range or even for dealing with some pest animals that are kind of close up you homesteaders that want to deal with an animal that's a little bit too close for comfort and you want to be able to do it really quietly, yeah, this is really going to work. When I shot the gel, I had some issues with the bolt not going quite far enough back to pick up the next round. There just wasn't quite enough energy. The rifle was filthy dirty at the time. There are probably a couple of things that we could do uh, to make this run a bit better because we do have some kind of nasty pistol powders that are being loaded up in here. Uh, we have, you know, first off we can keep this very clean, get some good lube on it. So I use the Spartan Accuracy Systems products to clean this out. And I'm using the Spartan Accuracy oil in here, which tends to work really well in all of my uh, pistols and rifles. It just kind of keeps everything really slick. Um, some other things that you might consider, you know, first off, these are subsonics we're dealing with. So maybe a can can help kind of increase pressures a little bit. And then we also could get an adjustable gas block. Just something to think about if you want to be able to run these. But I'm hoping that with all this cleaned out, uh, that we can run a full 10 round mag right here at 50 yards. Let's see what we can do. Okay, now I saw the brass go spinning off kind of close to me, so I didn't feel like ejection was uh, extremely uh, good on that one. We're going to see if it was able to pick up another round. No, no, it wasn't. So yeah, it barely ejected that case, and it looks like it did not pick up the next one. All right, let's see if we can break this in just a little bit. Keep it, keep it running. Okay, I felt that. Yeah, that one came back. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't have quite enough power to shove that bolt all the way back so it gets that little bit of uh, extra run up at the, uh, the brass to knock it into place. That one actually was behind the rim. It was able to grab the head of the case, but uh, it just didn't have quite enough oomph to really uh, slam it home. Uh, you saw my flinch there. Um, yeah, this one, check it out. I'm gonna put that on safe. Didn't quite make it back over the rim. It's actually catching on the inside of the rim. I'm trying to shove it in. And I gotta tell you, right now I am running this really wet. <laughs> so there you have it, one 10 round mag, two stoppages. This is just right on the edge of what it needs to be able to cycle this reliably. Of course, this ammo is gonna be great for your bolt action rifles. Uh, the Mossberg MVP is gonna be a great choice for this. And it'll be especially quiet too, since you don't have gases coming out anywhere back here. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to suppressing this, which I think is going to, number one, get you the maximum benefit out of the subsonic anyway, and increase some of those pressures, just make sure that you call the, the maker of that suppressor, because remember, even though this is a nine millimeter uh, diameter that we have here, and you should just be able to put a nine millimeter pistol uh, can on there, we're dealing with much higher pressures, possibly, especially with those supersonic rounds, and you're gonna need to check with the manufacturer and make sure that their can is gonna be able to handle it. Make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to see when new videos come out because we have some exciting ones on the way. 
more 350 legend with some strange projectiles. We have 243 and 5.7 by 28 coming up. We're going to do uh, some accuracy testing with 243. And uh, we have some really interesting series on the way. So yeah, hit that notification bell down below to make sure you don't miss a thing. Thank you, patrons of the Destructive Arts, for continuing to support the project. If anybody else wants to chip in a buck or two a month, I'll put a link to Patreon around here somewhere. Thank you to Sportsman's Guide and Stan and Mary at the 338 Lapua Magnum level. And thank you to Mr. No Name, Joseph Davis, and Peter at the 300 Win Mag level. You guys are taking care of business. And thank you to all the other patrons of the Destructive Arts that are chipping in that buck or two a month. It really does all add up and it makes it so I can buy projectiles and powders and gels. We're going to get into some fun stuff and I'll see you guys around. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.